Let's move on to MCQ number 61. The diagram shows a high power drawing of a bacterium. Which three components are found in both this bacterium and an animal cell? So guys, if we talk about animal cell and the bacterium, both contain cell membrane, both contain ribosome and both contain DNA. So the answer should be cell membrane, DNA and ribosome. The answer is D. Let's move on to MCQ number 62. Which function is correct for the description of the cell structure? Right. Membrane bound sacs arranged as flattened sac. Right. So guys, uh, membrane bound sacs are arranged as flattened sac. These are endoplasmic reticulum. Right. And uh, they do not match to this description because uh, organizes microtubules to produce spindle is the centriole. Centriole organizes the microtubules for the formation of spindle fibers. So option A is wrong because the cell structure does not match the description. Non-membrane bound cylindrical structures, these are centrioles, right? Non-membrane bound cylindrical structures are centrioles and packages hydrolytic enzymes used in the cell. The, this is the wrong description for the structure. Membranes which surround an enclosed cavity or we can say membranes which surround an, an inner enclosed cavity. This could be ER as well and synthesizes lipids. Yes, it can synthesize uh, lipids, but we don't know that whether it's SER or RER. Membrane bound spherical structures. Um, membrane bound spherical structures. These are lysosomes and lysosomes do not synthesize polypeptides. This is wrong. D is wrong. The answer is C. So the membranes which surround an inner enclosed inner cavity or we can say membranes which surround an enclosed inner cavity most likely this is endoplasmic reticulum right and endoplasmic reticulum can synthesize lipids if it's smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So the answer is C. Right. Let's move on to MCQ number 63. This is a very good MCQ. Ribosomes consist of two subunits each containing ribosomal RNA. An analysis of all the 70th ribosomes from a single cell of the bacterium E. coli showed that there were 38,000 ribosomal RNA molecules, two main types of ribosomal RNA molecules, and 19,000 copies of each type of ribosomal RNA molecule. How many 70th ribosomes were there in the E. coli cell? Okay, guys, so we need to understand this MCQ. So they are saying that ribosome has how many subunits? They are saying that ribosome has two subunits, right? This is the ribosome. And they say that each subunit contains a ribosomal RNA. For example, this subunit, the large subunit has one ribosomal RNA and the small subunit has one ribosomal RNA. So they say that an analysis, when we analyze the ribosomes, all the 70 ribosomes from a single cell of the bacterium Escherichia coli, so we got these results that there were altogether how many uh, ribosomal RNA molecules? There were 38,000 ribosomal RNA molecules altogether. And there were two main types of ribosomal RNA molecules. Yes, we can see over here that one type will be found in the large subunit and the other type will be found in the small subunit. So this is fine. And 19,000 copies of each type of ribosomal RNA molecule. Fine. So we need to know how many 70th ribosomes were there. So basically we can see that there are two ribosomal RNA. There are two ribosomal RNA per ribosome. So how many total ribosomal RNA are there? 38,000. So we can use a ratio proportion method to find the answer. So for example, if there is one ribosome, right? There is one ribosome. So one ribosome has how many uh, ribosomal RNAs, two ribosomal RNAs. So altogether, if we have 38,000 ribosomal RNAs, so what will be the number of the ribosomes in the cell? That will be X. So if you cross multiply, what will be the answer? X will be 38,000 divided by 2. So there will be total 19,000 ribosomal RNAs, or sorry, ribosomal, not ribosomal RNAs, there will be 19,000 ribosomes in the cell. I'm repeating this MCQ again. We can see that they say that ribosome consists of two subunits. So the first one is the large subunit and the second one is the small subunit. And they say that each subunit contains one ribosomal RNA. 
so we can see that per ribosome there are two ribosomal rnas and there are altogether how many ribosomal rnas 38000 right so we know we can use the ratio proportion method we know that per ribosome there are two ribosomal rnas so altogether if there are 38000 ribosomal rnas how many ribosomes will be there 19000 ribosomes will be there so the answer is b right mcq number 64 Pancreatic cells have a diameter of 35 micrometer. Red blood cells have a diameter of 7,000 nanometers. So guys, if we convert 7,000 nanometers into micrometers, there this will be 7,000 divided by 1,000. So whenever you want to convert uh, from nanometer to micrometer, you divide by 1,000. This will be 7 micrometers, right? Which statement is correct? So in this uh, MCQ, the statements uh, are basically comparing the pancreatic cells with the red blood cells. They are asking whether the pancreatic cells are larger or smaller and how many times larger. So always, if you want to find the number of times larger a cell is or the number of times smaller a cell is, you need to apply this formula. And what is uh, the formula? The formula is that the number of times larger or smaller a cell is equal to the diameter of the large cell divided by the diameter of the small cell. So what we have to do, we have to put the diameter of the larger cell in the numerator and we have to divide it by the diameter of the small cell that is 7 micrometer in this case. What is the answer? The answer is 5. So we can say that a pancreatic cell because it's a larger cell, it's 5 times larger than the red blood cell and we can say the red blood cell is five times smaller than the pancreatic cell so if ever you have to find the number of times larger a cell is or a number of times smaller the cell is what you have to do is you have to use this formula that is diameter of large cell divided by diameter of small cell and in this uh, by using this formula you will get a number and this number will tell you how many times larger for example, is the pancreatic cell as compared to the red blood cell or we can say how many times uh, smaller the red blood cell is to the pancreatic cell. So if pancreatic cell is five times larger than the red blood cell, so red blood cell is five times smaller than the pancreatic cell, right? So this formula can be applied in both cases. So what is the correct statement? Pancreatic cells are five times larger than the red blood cells. Answer is A. Let's move on to MCQ number 65. Which structures are present in Vibrio cholerae cell? So guys, you should know that Vibrio cholerae is a bacterium, right? And bacterium means prokaryotic cell. So a prokaryote contains circular DNA, it contains, it does not contain mitochondria, it does not contain ATS ribosomes. So the answer will be D. The Vibrio cholerae only contains circular DNA. MCQ number 68, which features of microvilli and root hairs are correct? Increase the cell surface area. Guys, you should know that both microvilli and the root hairs, they both increase the surface area of the cell. Cannot be resolved with the light microscope. Microvilli, you should know that microvilli cannot be resolved using the light microscope. Root hairs can be resolved. Root hairs are larger. So they can be resolved with the light microscope. However, microvilli are too small to be seen with the light microscope. So microvilli cannot be resolved with the light microscope, um, right? Vacuole is only found in the root hairs and not in the microvilli, right? Microvilli just contain the cytoplasm. They do not contain the vacuole. And if we talk about more than one present on a cell, so guys, microvilli are larger number, whereas root hairs are one per cell right so the answer will be a so uh, the best option is a because microvilli increased increase the cell surface area microvilli cannot be resolved with the light microscope and vacuoles are found in the root hairs and not microvilli and more than one present on a cell are microvilli and not the root hair root hair is one per cell so the answer is a right let's move on to mcq number 67 a scientist carried out an experiment to separate the organelles in an animal cell by mass. The scientist mixed the cells with a buffer solution which had the same water potential as the cells. He then broke the cells open with a blender to release the organelles. The extracted mixture was filtered 
and then spun in a centrifuge at a speed that separates the heaviest organelle. This organelle sank to the bottom forming a solid pallet 1. The liquid above the pallet 1 was poured into a clean centrifuge tube and spun in a centrifuge at a higher speed to separate the next heaviest organelle. This organelle sank to the bottom forming a solid pallet 2. He repeated this process twice more to obtain pallet 3 and pallet 4, each containing a single organelle. What is the function of the organelle extracted in pallet 4? So guys, what uh, the scientists are doing in this experiment is that they extracted organelles from the animal cells and they are separating the organelles by mass. So uh, as they are uh, increasing the speed, the organelles which settle at the bottom are comparatively lighter. So they said in the information that the pallet one contained the heaviest organelle and uh, as compared to the pallet one, the pallet two, the organelles found in the pallet two are lighter as compared to the organelles found in the pallet one, right? So obviously uh, the first pallet will contain the heaviest and the next heaviest will be in the pallet two and the next heaviest uh, will be in the pallet 3 and the next heaviest will be in the pallet 4. So as we go from uh, first to fourth pallet, the mass of the organelle decreases. So they are asking that what is the function of the organelle extracted in the pallet 4? Because this is an animal cell. So guys, uh, remember this mnemonic for the animal cell, NMLR, right? So if we talk about the organelles, right, in decreasing mass, so this mnemonic is good for you. Decreasing mass. If you have to arrange the organelles of an animal cell in decreasing mass, so the heaviest is the nucleus, then the mitochondria, then lysosomes and the ribosomes. So the fourth pallet will contain ribosomes and you know that the function of the ribosomes is the synthesis of protein. So the answer will be D. Guys, if this was a plant cell, so the mnemonic would be NCMLR where C will be the chloroplast because chloroplasts are, chloroplasts are absent in the animal cells, right? Let's move on to MCQ 68. The electron micrograph shows part of two, two eukaryotic cells, which features are also found in the prokaryotes. So guys, let's identify the features. We can see that Y is the layer attached to the cell wall. So Y is basically cell membrane and x is the cell wall x is the cell wall and w is the nuclear envelope so we have to state that which of these structures are found in the prokaryotes so guys you should know that the prokaryotes contain the cell membrane and the cell wall and they do not contain nuclear envelope so x and y only will be present in prokaryotes. MCQ number 69, which is the last MCQ. Until recently, the typical viruses known to science were 20 to 150 nanometer in size. In 2003, the MIMI virus was discovered with the size of approximately 680 nanometers. In 2013, the Pandora virus was discovered, which has a size of over 1000 nanometers. Which viruses can be seen using both a light microscope with a maximum resolution of 0.25 micrometer and an electron microscope. So guys, uh, as we all know that the resolution of the electron microscope is equal to 0.5 nanometers, which means that any structure greater than 0.5 nanometer will be visible, right? And over here, they say that the maximum resolution of light microscope is 0.25 micrometer, which is equal to 250 nanometers if you multiply by 1000. So the resolution of the light microscope in this case is 250 nanometers, which means that any structure greater than 250 nanometer will be visible using the light microscope. Okay, so we need to state that which viruses will be seen using both light and electron microscope, right? So if you talk about a typical virus, typical viruses are between 20 and 150 nanometers. And they, these are 
greater than size greater in size than 0 0.5 nanometer so they will be visible using em but not visible using light microscope why because this size 20 to 150 nanometer is less than 250 nanometer and anything which is smaller than 250 nanometer cannot be visible using the light microscope right so not visible using light microscope right and we have to take an option in which we have to take uh, an option in which uh, the virus can be seen with both the microscopes so typical virus cannot be seen with both the uh, both the microscopes typical virus can only be seen with the electron microscope and not the light microscope if we talk about mimi virus so guys mimi virus uh, has a size of 680 nanometer which is greater than 250 nanometer so obviously this will be visible using light microscope as well as electron microscope because its size is greater than 0 0.5 so the mimi virus will be visible using um, both the light both the light microscope and the electron microscope and if we talk about the pandora virus its size is 1000 nanometers which is greater than 250 uh, nanometers and also greater than 0 0.5 nanometers which means that pandora virus will also be visible using both the light and the electron microscope so the answer will be b okay guys so we are done with the mcqs